So it is 10 o'clock. We're going to get started. Um, about this week, today and tomorrow are all about the table saw. Today, we're going to go over the basics of the table saw. That's this thing right here that you're kind of looking at on the other side of my shoulder. Okay. And then tomorrow, we are going to hold on. I got something coming in. We're going to take a quiz on it. Okay. So, you guys have had one quiz so far in this class. Oh, there's another. Hold on. This is annoying. You guys have taken one quiz, quiz, one quiz in this class, so you should have a general idea of the format and how they go. It is not intended to be rocket science. Um, my quizzes are intended to reinforce the more important points that have been discussed previously. Okay, so. That being said, if you look at today's and tomorrow's modules, like we're doing right now, okay? For example, today, we'll be going over the table saw. There will be a quiz on the table saw tomorrow. And then there's a document right here, okay? And if you go to Wednesday, Today, you're taking the table saw safety quiz. The document linked above will help you in taking the quiz. And it's the exact same document that's listed for Tuesday. And this is what it is. All right. So there's an image of our table saw with some basic terminology or parts of the table saw. For example, the rip fence, a miter gauge. And we have se several different types of miter gauges, so they can look a little different than this. Um, the rip fence lock handle. This is how when we raise it, we can slide the rip fence right and left to alter the width of cut or the distance between the face of the rip fence and the blade. Then we can push it down to lock the fence in place for our cut. All right, here is our start stop switch. It's a pull to start, push to stop. Here is our blade height adjustment. And that little knob in the center is actually a locking knob where once you set the height, you can lock it so it won't move. We generally don't use those, but if you ever walk up to the machine and go to raise or lower the blade and this handle doesn't move freely and easily, then that's because this lock is set, okay? Hold on, I got somebody else coming in late here. It is... Okay. Um, the handle on the left side is how we change the angle of our blade. Our blade can tilt to the left away from the fence. <clears throat> and then in the center, there's another lock knob. Okay. Oh, there's another right there. Hold on. Okay. Um, so that's the basic parts of the table saw. There are a lot of other parts. Like, for example, I didn't put it in here, but this little guy right here behind the blade is our riving knife. Very, very important piece of safety equipment that helps to prevent kickback. And a kickback is when the board gets shot out the back of the saw at generally a pretty good clip. Um, in other words, if you were standing behind this area here and not to the left of the blade where you're supposed to stand, okay, you're gonna get hit by a board if it kicks back. And trust me, it's going to hurt. Okay, most likely it's going to put you on the floor, curled up like a, like a little baby, wincing and crying, okay? And as a group, we're gonna stand around you and point at you and laugh because you were standing in the wrong place. You screwed up. Oh, there's another late person, hold on. Okay, so we always stand to the left of the blade. There's also, what you guys are probably even more interested in than a photograph with words on it, is all these sentences here. I know how much you guys love to read safety information about machines. I'm sure it's quite important to you. But what's most important are the highlighted sentences. Just as before, when you take the quiz, these highlighted sentences will help you with the questions. There will be five questions. Um, can anybody tell me how many highlighted sentences there are? Now, I can't see the chat window right now, but let me see if I can just pull it up. Okay, well, okay, I'm gonna stop the share. There are five highlighted sentences. That means there are five questions on the quiz, okay? There you go, you got it, okay? So, that's the information that covers safety on the table saw. 
Now let's actually have a discussion at the machine about safety on the table saw, okay? So I'm gonna end up moving this cart around a little bit. Um, it'll get annoying, at least to me anyway, I don't know. Um, yeah, there's one at the very top. So let's take a look. So I have what this little cheat sheet right here, the same thing that, that's um, on today's and Wednesday's module so that I can try not to forget to tell you something. Um, I do tend to forget sometimes. So as stated before, here's some basic parts of the table saw. Oh, wrong way, okay. For example, this is obviously our blade right here. This is our riving knife. All it is, a little piece of steel, shaped kind of like a shark spin, all right, that locks in directly behind the blade, okay? And it's intended to keep a board from doing, here, I'll show you, take it out, from doing this. And basically, as you're pushing it, it's intended to keep a board from doing this and coming in contact with the teeth at the back of the blade. Because the teeth at the back of the blade are coming up out of the table. They will pick a board up and throw it out the back, okay? The driving knife is intended to keep, help prevent kickback. Also supposedly help prevent pitching, pinching, but we seem to still have a pinching. All right, so let's talk about the main basic function of this machine. Its main purpose, in fact, the only thing you would use it for in beginning woods would be ripping to final accurate width. Hold on, I got somebody coming in again. Okay, ripping to final accurate width is the main function of this machine. That's what it does best, okay? Why do you think they call this a rip stop? Rip stop. Why do you think they call this a rip fence? Okay, because it's used in conjunction with the blade to rip a board to width. This is a rip cut, cutting along the length of a board, altering the overall width of the board. In other words, I can take a board like this, that's currently four and one eighth inches wide, and I could rip it to two inches wide or three inches wide or one and a half inches wide. That's a rip cut, okay? The bottom line is a rip is defined as placing the long edge of a board against the fence, and cutting along its length like that, okay? What you cannot do on this machine, if I ever see a student, and I've seen students do this, if I, when, when I see a student do this, because it does happen, Okay, when I see a student attempt to do something like that, let's say, let's just say that their day is not going to end well, okay? If they get to do the cut before I catch them, their day is not going to end well because once this piece right here gets separated from this piece, it is going to kick back. And if they're dumb enough to do that, they're dumb enough to stand right here behind it and it's going to slam into them, okay? It is going to kick back. You're not going to stop it. It's probably also going to grab your board and do something like this or something like this. It's not going to be pleasant, I can tell you that. That's a cross cut. We do cross cuts at the miter saw, okay? That's a cross cut. That's a rip cut, okay? We do rip cuts at the table saw and the rip cuts. All right. A couple of basic rules, okay? If the fence is set, and you can set here, hold on. Let's show you the back side of this. Let's bring you over here. Everybody walk over here. And my, I don't have my long extension cord on right now, so it's a little bit trying to get there. Let's talk about, I for, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you guys the rest of the rest of the parts. Okay, so this is our handle to lock and unlock the fence, all right? Now I want you guys to notice something about this. Whoops, I went down where I should have gone up. When this fence is unlocked, I can use a single finger and slide it closer to the blade or away from the blade. When I go to lock it, all I have to do 
there's a look down, there's a little sight glass right here. You guys can't see it, but it's similar to this one right here. And then there's a tape measure embedded on this rail. If I want to set something at four inches to rip for four inches, I line it up with my mark. And it's as easy as a single finger to lock it. Okay. My point here is this. There's nothing on any machines in this shop that needs to be forced. If, for example, you're down here with this handle right here that raises and lowers the blade. If you go to try and raise or lower the blade and it doesn't move easily, freely, there's something wrong. Stop. Most likely it's because this little knob in the center, you guys can see this. This little knob right here, okay, is a lock, or we can lock the height of the blade. We can lock it down so this won't move. We can unlock it so now we have free movement of it. The same thing on this other knob on the side of the machine right here, okay, it's got a locking knob. This will change our blade angle. The blade on this machine can angle. Okay. No, the grain direction of the wood makes no difference at all on the table saw. That's a really good question because there are materials that will cut on the table saw that have no grain direction. Plywood, sheet goods, uh, particle board, MDF, things like that. There is no grain direction. So when we talk about the long edge going against the thin, it has nothing to do with grain direction. And I should have had over here. So on this board right here, there is no grain. Okay, this piece of part board, there is no grain direction at all. So the edge that would go against the fence would be the longest edge. On this board, this happens to be 16 by 16, so it wouldn't matter which edge. Just go like that, go like that, wouldn't matter. Okay? So the grain direction doesn't matter on the table saw. Now, it doesn't matter physically in regards to how it cuts or what direction you cut, but it can matter a lot in appearance. Um, for example, drawer fronts. Okay, drawer fronts need to go, the grain needs to go the length of the drawer front from left to right, not top to bottom. So that's one of the considerations how the piece is actually going to be used in furniture. So that's the grain direction thing. All right, so we're back to the fence location. Here's a safety thing. If your fence is set at four inches or closer to the blade, you must use a push stick. Somebody tell me how many fingers they have on their right hand. Trust me, this is set up. Nope, you're all wrong. You have four fingers and a thumb. All right? When you put a board to the table saw, you're not going to have your hand on the top of the board like this. You're going to have your thumb hooked at the back. Once the board gets about here, you'll have your thumb hooked at the back and four fingers on the face of the board. Okay, you'll never be like this. You'll always be like this. You can't control the board when your hand's like this. You can control it when your hand's like this, okay? At four inches, which is what the fence is set to right now, it's a little too tight to get your hand through between the fence and the blade. So we use a push stick. Or we use a push pad. Or we use one of these funky dots, funky things you've seen probably on some of the videos and stuff, okay? Just stop though, that really used to much. So that's one thing to do. The next one that is on the quiz in no particular order, your form has to be at least minimum 12 inches long in order to rip the wood on the table saw. For example, this board is exactly 12 inches long, so I can safely rip this board to final width, okay? 
That's good. This board happens to be six inches long. I cannot safely rip this board to width. It's not allowed on the table saw. Minimum 12 inch length. Next. And this, when this happens, I, I get a good one. So when you come to the table saw, you've accomplished a few things already. You've already done some milling on the board already. You've gotten it to final thickness, okay? In other words, you've got a jointed face, you've got a plane face, which are now parallel to each other, and the board is a consistent thickness. No matter where you measure it, it's gonna be the same. You've also got one jointed edge. In other words, you flatten, straighten, and squared one edge, okay? You got two good faces, one good edge. The table saw is going to take care of the other edge. The long jointed edge of your board must be placed against the fence. Period. You cannot put the rough edge or the non jointed edge of the board against the fence. Well, I don't know if you guys can see this or not. I'm going to move this a little bit so you can. Hopefully. So, let's zoom in a little bit. That's too much. All right, so I want you guys to see this. See this gap between the edge of the board and the fence? I can close that gap like that. Now it's touching right here. What's it doing back here? It's a, almost a half inch away from the fence. Okay, or if I push this edge against the fence. Now I still have a gap up here in the front. Okay. In other words, when I go to feed this board, I'm going to start it back here. All right. And I'm going to have this edge against the fence and it can actually rock on the fence as it's going through. In other words, it can sit here and do this. What's what's that going to do to this edge as you're cutting? If it's if your board's doing this as it's going through the saw, right? So we want the jointed edge against the fence. If you look, there's a nice tight contact all the way along the edge of the board with the fence. There's no gaps. That's the jointed edge against the fence. Yes, you can use a push pad anytime you want. That's one of the reasons these things are so nice. You can use a couple of them. Um, and they're actually pretty good. So far, I've used these guys a little bit on the joiner and on the table saw, and they're actually pretty darn good. The nice thing about these is, let's see if you can see this. Remember how I told you to have your thumb hooked on the back of the board like this instead of your hand like this as you're going through the saw? You've got to have something on the back of the board holding onto it to control it. These things have these little guys, these little. Do, they're called doohickeys. That's a technical term. Okay. But the nice thing about it is you can put it flat on a board and they raise up out of the way, or you can actually hook it to the end of the board like that. You can kind of bang. So that gives you that little thumb action on the end of the board. Okay. Or if it's on your face. So in other words, the only reason you'd have it on the face like that, if you had a long board and you had to use two of these pads, one in the front, one in the back, because you'll have to, you'll have to jog them back and forth. And we'll show you that at some point. In time. Yes, you can use push pads all the time if you want to. Absolutely, not a problem. The next thing that might be on the quiz, or it is on the quiz, it's your responsibility to make sure that the machine is adjusted properly before you use it, okay? And here's what that means. Number one, your fence is set to the proper width and locked. Because if you don't lock it, and I've seen people do this, then when you go to put your board against it and cut it, you're always going to have a little bit of pressure towards the fence to keep it against the fence. It's going to move the fence as you cut. So your fence set and locked. That's one thing you can check. Next, since this blade can tilt to the left away from the fence, if you don't check, that the blade is 90 degrees to the fence, or to the table, I mean, 
um, you're not going to get a square cut. In other words, by the time you rip that edge off there, it's not going to be 90 degrees to this face and the opposite face. Okay, that's one of the things that this machine does. It rips the final accurate width and it creates two more 90 degree surfaces. This edge to this face, this edge to this face. Okay, so um, blade angle, blade height is important. And I'm going to bring this camera back over here. Since we can change the height of the blade, let's zoom in on this. Look how it that. Hey, I went the right way that time. Okay, we can change the height of this blade, and here's our rule on blade height. Okay, so this is actually a carbide tooth blade. You can see these little guys like here and here. These are actually pieces of solid carbide that are brazed or welded to this blade blank, okay? Um, in between each tooth, these dips are called gullets, all right? So basically what we say is blade height should be one quarter inch or approximately one quarter inch above your material. So we use these gullets as an indicator. So basically what you'll end up doing is lubricating that so it doesn't squeak so bad. And set it so the gullet it's right at about at the top of your material. That's the right height, about a quarter of an inch, okay? So half, a lot of times it depends on the depth of these gullets, but there's not too much variance, maybe an eighth of an inch plus or minus, that different blades, the depth of these gullets varies. So we usually just say to the bottom of the gullet, you're good. The last thing we want, this would be so bad. I can't imagine how spooky it would be to cut with this blade exposed by that much. I also, oh, that's terrible. I can't imagine trying to cut a board with the blade barely sticking out like that, okay? So, right there you go, that's the blade height, all right? Now, actually ripping a board. I'm gonna come back here to the front of the machine. I guess you'd call it the front. And show you something. Okay. It's this right here. Whoops. Whoa, what just happened? This thing automatically scanned. I didn't know it could do that. Okay, see this big red switchy looking thing? Okay, this is the on off switch. I call it a paddle switch because that's what it is. There's another little switch right here. This is the main power to the machine. Okay, this machine has a computer built into it. It's called a saw stop is the brand name of the machine. Basically, it's got a cartridge inside that if for some reason, any part of the human body comes in contact with the blade while the blade is moving, it will shut the machine down and keep it from getting hurt. You guys see that red light flashing down there? Watch this little red light, okay? So I'm gonna touch the blade. Now it knows I'm touching it. Now I'm not touching it, okay? So it knows when there's human contact with the blade, all right? And it can shut it down incredibly quickly. In other words, you're not supposed to be able to cut a finger off of this machine. Worst thing you're gonna need is a Band-Aid, supposedly. I wouldn't trust the machine to work 100% of the time it's still machine because I have seen cars broken down on the side of the highway. That means the machine didn't work right. So don't trust them. Trust your procedures. So when this works, there's a good reason why this big honking switch is right here. There's two things about this switch that are important. Number one, it's location. It's located to the left of the blade where you're supposed to stand. You're supposed to stand to the left of the blade here not here. If you stand between the blade and the fence, if a board kicks back, it's going to hit you. If you stand to the left of the blade, it's not going to hit you. It's going to go right by your right side and not, not body one bit. So the location of that switch is important because in this shop, the table saw and the dado saw are basically exactly the same. We just have a different blade mounted in them. You're taught to shut this machine off every single time using your left knee. So there's a reason 
but that switch is so big and the place where it is, that you should be standing close to the machine to the left of the blade. So when you go to start it off, it's a simple flick of the knee, okay? You shouldn't even have to look down. It should be a natural thing. So turn it on. Cut your board, you're done. Cut with your left knee and shut off. There's another nice thing about that. If for some reason you're feeding a board to the machine and something is going wrong, something's not right, it's not cutting right or it's binding or whatever the case may be, <clears throat> excuse me, the last thing you want to do is take your hand off the board and, and lose control of the board. You always want to maintain control of the board at all times. That means you've got to keep your hand or your push stick on it. You can't remove it and then go back. If you ever take your hand off a board in the table saw, walk away, shut the machine down, or notice, get out of the way. I'd get over here, I'd shut it down and wait to see what happens. Okay? Don't try to reestablish control of the board. Really bad idea. But the nice thing about this big switch is, if I'm sitting here like this, and this thing runs, okay, let's see, I'm gonna bring this over here so you guys can see it. And this thing's running, all of a sudden they're like, oh man, there's something going wrong, and I'm right here, all I gotta do is touch it, wait for this machine to shut down. Now I'm golden, okay, now I'm good, all right? So let's talk about actually cutting a board. It's really, I, I wanna say it's really simple, and it, it, it is, in essence, um, it just takes practice and it takes consistent practice. In other words, you need to do this the same way every time. Um, once you get comfortable with doing this the right way, the safe way, you're good to go. You'll get better and better at it at all times, okay? So let's say I wanna take this board right here down to two inches wide, okay? First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the fence to two inches. I'm gonna look straight down, I'm gonna sight, I've got a little red line here on this sight glass that should match the two inch mark on this tape measure that's embedded on this rail. I'm just gonna tap it over to two inches, lock the fence, okay? I've got my board sitting right here, all right? My jointed edge is to the right, so all I have to do is slide it over. I don't have to flip it or do anything. Oh, which side was my jointed edge? I don't remember. I've always got it set in just like that, so all I have to do is bring it over, okay? I'm gonna stand to the left of the machine. I'm closer to four inches, so I have a push stick. My left hand has a very important job. My left hand is gonna keep the board tight against the fence. In other words, I'm pushing against the fence with my left hand. One thing I cannot do with my left hand, I cannot let it go past the front of the blade. So I'm gonna keep my left hand right in the area in front of the blade. My right hand is just going to feed it. Now once I get about right here to the edge of the table, I'm going to control it with my left hand, grab my foot stick, now I can take my left hand away, it's all the way to it off, and I'm going to shut it off with my leg. And I have to wait until the blade comes to complete stock before I can remove any scrap. Never try to remove a piece of scrap material while the blade is still moving, wait till it comes to complete stop, then you get out of the way. And what I should have is a board that is exactly two inches wide, dead on two inches wide, okay? That's what it does, it rips to width. A rip cut creates an altered width, okay? W-I-D-T-H, not W-I-T-H, okay? So let's see what else is on this sheet. If you guys have questions, please ask. There's, so far, you guys have got great questions, so I appreciate it. So ask away, all right? Kind of like driving. Yes, it absolutely does take practice. In fact, um, when we take our safety test in here, in, under normal circumstances, there's a 50-question safety test that students have to pass 100% before they're allowed to do anything in the shop. And I equate it to your driving test. You know, these days when you take your driving test, the written part, it's done on a computer at the DMV, I think. So you sit there and you take your test and you pass it and you walk out of the DMV. Let me get my remote. And you've got your shiny new license. You're all happy, you're excited. You get in the car for the first time and you get out on the road and you're driving away 
and you're in Grants Pass, so it's a weird place to drive anyway. And all of a sudden, you come upon a red sign that's got like eight sides on it, and there's a word stop on it. And you forget what that sign means. Even though you got the question right in the test, you forget, and you just blow right through it. You're a goner. If you forget what a one-way sign means, you're, you know, you're in trouble. If you forget what a yield sign means, if you forget the rules of the road, you're putting yourself and others in, in harm's way. Same thing goes with the safety test in here. If you forget what's on the safety test and you forget that you have to use a push stick at four inches or closer to the blade, if you forget that your board has to be at least 12 inches long to be able to rip it to width on the table saw, you're putting yourself and others in harm's way, okay? So you have to remember these things. Um, this is one of the reasons I give answers to quizzes because in normal circumstances in Beginning Woods, the first four weeks of the semester is dedicated solely to safety. In other words, students don't touch a machine until they pass that safety test. And that safety test usually occurs in the fourth week. Um, and you have to get 100% on that test. So the way I, I help students get 100% on it is, and help them to remember it, is to show them the test and all the answers over and over and over and over again. Um, you will, you would find yourself out in the shop days on end going through every single question on the test with practical examples of why that question is there and why the answer is what it is. You would hack, actually see the test up on the screen in the classroom. We'd go through every single question and answer at least half a dozen times um, with the test showing on the screen in the classroom. You'd hold the test in your hand several times, have the opportunity to go through it and ask questions as, as if you were just taking it, but you could ask questions about about some of the answers that you don't know in other words the whole idea behind that long four weeks of safety is to be as repetitive as possible about everything in the shop you're going to hear things over and over and over again so that it becomes a simple matter of muscle memory of, of recall the more you hear something the better chance you're going to be able to recall it and the more different ways you see it and hear it the better chance you're going to be able to recall it Anyway, that's the safety test stuff. Yeah, it is kind of like driving in a way. But don't I think they make you guys practice quite a bit with driving these days. Um, I, don't they make you guys do like so many hours with an adult or with, before you have passengers and like you can't drive at night within so many hours. I don't know. There's all kinds of rules. It was totally different when, uh, when I was in high school. There was actually a driver's ed class that you were required to take in high school. You took your driver's test, boom, you passed, you're down, you just, it's normal. No, there's no practice, no nothing. So anyway, um, I wanna go over a few other things on the table saw that we haven't covered yet, but they're not on the quiz, but that doesn't mean they're not important, okay? So you guys should know the difference by now between a rip cut, which is cutting in this direction, Right? Along the length of the board. It has nothing to do with grain direction, it has to do with the dimension of the board. And you should know what a cross cut is. Let me do that real quick. Here, watch. I've got it on one side. Okay, I don't, know. I don't know if that helps or not, okay? So that's a cross cut. We do that on the miter saw. Remember that word miter, keep it in your mind, okay? That's a rip cut. We do that on the table saw using the rip fence. But we can cross cut using the table saw, but we just can't cross cut using the rip fence on the table saw. In other words, we have to take what's called a miter gauge. Now remember that word miter saw? This is a miter gauge, which allows us to put the long edge of a board against an accessory fence. One of the rules in this shop, the table saw has a fence. The miter saw has a fence. The dado saw has a fence. The jointer has a fence. The panel router, the panel saw has fences. The router table has a fence. The band saws have fences that we can put in place. We don't even use them, but you can put a fence on them. 
the rule about fences in our shop is this. On every single machine that has a fence, you must always place the long edge against the fence. If you're using the miter gauge, it's just an accessory fence, a temporary fence that allows you to put the long edge against it like that, then make a cross cut. If you're using the rip fence, you have to have the long edge against the fence. You cannot do this, okay? When you're using the miter gauge, you cannot do this, okay? You can only do this. That's the long edge against the fence. This would be incredibly sketchy. I don't even have the whole board in contact with the fence here. It's like this, okay? It's just sketchy as anything, all right? So anything with a fence, we always place the long edge against the fence. It gives us control, okay? You cannot use the miter gauge and the rip fence in conjunction with one another. In other words, let's say, for example, that you are going to use table saw to cut several boards to length, and you want that length to be four inches. I've set this fence at four inches. I've got my miter gauge here. I'm golden. I've got the long edge against the fence. Now I want to cut four inches off of it. I just slide it right up to the fence, make my cut. Really bad idea. You cannot do that. As soon as this piece is finally separated from this piece, as soon as that happens, this piece is going to come flying out the back of the saw right at you. Okay? The only way you can actually do this, and you can do this on this is to clamp an accessory or a temporary stop to the table saw. Now you can set this stop four inches from the blade. Now what you do, slide it up to that stop, cut it off. Now there's a gap between the fence and the end of this board. In other words, you're not going to trap a piece of material between something that's moving, the blade, and something that's not moving, the fence. Okay, that's a kickback situation. This is not. Okay, that's just a temporary stop. That's how we would cut the link multiple boards using a miter gauge on the table saw. All right. Did I go over minimum length? Minimum length on the table saw is 12 inches. Your board must be at least 12 inches long in order to rip it to width on the table saw. You can't take a board. That's six inches long, like this little guy, right? Let's see what else is on here. If there's anything else, I want to make sure you guys get. Always have safety glasses on. In fact, when you guys show up here, you'll be entering through an odd door in this shop. They're going to ask that you guys enter from the back of the shop itself and not enter into the separate classroom. There will be a case on, mounted on the wall right inside the door that has safety glasses in it. Um, you will be required to put a pair of safety glasses on before you walk into the shop. Um, prescription glasses are acceptable. You wouldn't have to wear safety glasses over prescription glasses, but you will have safety glasses on at all times in the shop. Um, you can't wear gloves. We don't wear gloves in the shop. Um, no baggy clothes. Stand up the blade, stand right up this machine. That's kind of about it, at least for now. Um, like I said, tomorrow there'll be a quiz. I'll go over it before you actually take it. And then there's that document that will help you. All the highlighted items are the five things that are on the quiz. So it shouldn't be a problem at all. And that's pretty much all we'll do tomorrow is the quiz. Um, and if you guys don't have any questions, that's it. Okay, that's it for the day. You've got a few minutes before the end of class. You're ready to take off. You guys take care of yourselves. Have a good afternoon. And we will see you all tomorrow. Okay? Bye bye, folks. Hasta la vista.
Sim. 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 Sim.